everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about my 10,000 mile update on my Subaru STI. Right now I am at 10,930 miles and I've had this car for about a year and a half. So the reason the miles are low is because I get in press cars and so I don't drive it quite as often as I used to. Now for the first 5,000 miles I had my summer tires on and then right at around 5,000 miles I switched over to winter tires. I got my oil changed uh, and so I was testing out the Bridgestone Blizzak WS80 tires, which I do have a video on if you'd like to check that out. And so I was using that through the winter. So I put basically 5,000 miles on those winter tires and right now I'm back on the summer tires. So let's talk about the winter tires first. What was absolutely great about them was their traction on snow and ice. It was honestly incredible. So I was driving with these tires on with three other trucks and SUVs, all of them all-wheel drive, not that that has any influence on lateral grip, but anyways, they had all-season tires. I had the Bridgestone Blizzaks, which are winter tires, and we all went on this on-ramp, which was icy, uh, all of us at the same speed, and all three of them slid off, uh, not that it was a big deal, you know, there was plenty of open space they could get right back on, but the Bridgestone Blizzax held, went right around the corner like it was nothing. So, you know, the tire can make a huge difference. They're fantastic in the snow. The unfortunate news is there was really only two times I used them in the snow. Uh, Oregon and the Northwest had a pretty pathetic snow season, so I didn't get to make it up to the mountain all that much. And when I did go up to the mountain, there wasn't snow on the road. So... I didn't really use them all that much uh, for their intended purpose. They were fantastic on the snow, they had fantastic grip, even starting you know, on a hill like from a stop worked out perfectly, so totally loved the tires, they were great. Now what about driving them on the roads and especially in the warmer temperatures because that's what I got to experience this winter in Oregon. Well, you do notice the tires aren't quite as rigid, and so when you turn in, you get a little bit of a delay where the tire kind of deforms and then starts, uh, forms its slip angle, and then you go on about your way. And so with the summer tires, you definitely notice that the turn in is a lot sharper, a lot quicker, versus with the winter tires where they're just kind of a little more rubbery. And that's just because the winter compound is so much softer. So when you do turn in, it kind of just deforms, it takes a little bit of time, and then you eventually turn in. So you definitely appreciate once you get back onto your summer tires and you're driving in dry conditions because they seem just a bit more responsive than the winter tires. Now the other crazy thing that happened with my car in these previous 5,000 miles is that I've been rear-ended twice. Now I have an Acura Integra which has been hit six times, yes, six times, all while the car was not moving. And now in my Subaru STI, I've been hit twice while the car was not moving. So the first scenario, I was waiting at a traffic light in a line of cars. There's a car in front of me, there's a car behind me. You might think someone crashes into the car behind me and they hit me. Nope, the person behind me just let off the, their brake pedal and just slid right into me. So they hit me at about three miles per hour. It put a, a little uh, license plate into my rear bumper. So that was kind of frustrating to deal with. And so, you know, I went and got my bumper replaced. Two months later, two months later, I'm on the highway. Uh, there's some traffic cones merging the lanes. So I merge over, the car in front of me slams on the brakes. I slam on my brakes, come to a stop. There's cars to my left, there's cones to my right. The car behind me doesn't notice apparently uh, that we've all come to a stop. And you know, I've got nowhere to go. Slams into my rear bumper. Uh, and that one was a little bit more severe though the damage on my car doesn't look very bad. Just got some white paint on it and I'm gonna get the bumper replaced very soon. Now their car, on the other hand, didn't look quite as good. They busted up their front light uh, where they kind of tried to turn out of the way at the last second, I believe. Uh, but anyways, they busted up their front bumper. Now the exciting news is that the person who hit me didn't have insurance. So I get to cover the deductible myself. And if it wasn't apparent by my tone, it's really not that exciting of news because I have to pay for it. So that's my bad luck eight times while the cars aren't moving. But I did, you know, my first time driving when I was driving on either, I think it was just when I got my license and I was about 16. I did get in a wreck that was my fault, uh, you know, and I, and I T-boned a truck and that wasn't pretty. So, you know, mistakes happen. Uh, I try not to get upset about it, you know, people uh, don't pay attention, mistakes happen, bad things occur, um, my bumper's going to get replaced, no big deal, so, you know, it's not the end of the world, whatever, getting my bumper replaced again, it's just kind of a hassle and it takes up time, 
uh, the time portion is what frustrates me the most because it's been you know a couple months since I've been uh, waiting to get this replaced and I'm still currently waiting to get it replaced now one of the things is I drive press cars pretty frequently now and so that gives me a lot of different perspective because when I bought this car I hadn't driven all that many cars and so what are the things that when I get back into this car that I think about the first thing that always pops into my head and I just have to commend Subaru on this because honestly it's phenomenal the visibility in this car is fantastic I've said it before and I'm gonna keep saying it I drive these other vehicles and some of them they're just willing to make so much sacrifice in visibility for whatever reason that may be and whenever I get back into my car I just kind of look around and I'm like wow like I can seriously see everything and you know that's not a trend that all automakers uh, follow so I appreciate what Subaru does uh, most of the vehicles I test have very good visibility the other ones that are worth noting uh, the Ford uh, what was it the C-Max and also the Escape both of those have fantastic visibility uh, so those are some of the cars worth mentioning um, but basically every time I get back in the Subaru I'm like oh yeah Subaru did it right with this car fantastic visibility every way around the other thing that I notice, uh, some of the seats in cars are not very comfortable. And these seats, even though this is a sports car, you know, it's got a stiff suspension, everything like that, it doesn't feel uncomfortable to go on long road trips in these seats. These seats have a good amount of cushion to them. They're very soft uh, and they just feel great to sit in. I was just in the Corvette and in my video, I'll state that the seats are comfortable. I'm gonna retract that statement uh, purely because I went on a road trip in them. They're fine for short distances. Uh, and that's why I said they were comfortable because I was just driving at a short distance. And during that short distance, they were fine. I drove it a little bit further, went to the beach. It was about 90 miles. And my back, my lower back really started to hurt. My girlfriend said it really hurt her butt. So the seats uh, were kind of firm. Uh, the lumbar support was a little weird. And to me, it didn't work out. And for her, it didn't work out. So overall, the seats in that weren't that great. And I come back and I sit in the Subaru and I'm like, man, like these are fantastic seats. I've done uh, a 2,000 plus mile road trip in this car. And during that, I never thought to myself like, oh, like I really need to get out of this car. Like the, the seats are killing me. It's a very comfortable car to ride in. Yes, the suspension is stiff, but what you feel is the seat and the seat's very comfortable. And so that's what I really like about it. Now, some of the complaints, some of the minor things about this, uh, this little center console area. So it's kind of just started to stay open. It won't shut anymore, which is kind of annoying. Um, and there might be a spring or something in there that I can adjust, uh, or I may just wait until I get my oil changed again at the dealership and have them do it. But regardless, this center console lid just keeps popping up and it won't stay down. And that's kind of just annoying. You know, it's just like a kind of a quality thing that's like, hey, you know, this should just stay closed. That's kind of ridiculous. But you know, it's not like it affects the performance of the car. So it's not the end of the world. I've mentioned the fuel economy is terrible in this car. I mean, yeah, that's the same case. I believe over the 10,000 miles, uh, the average I got over those 10,000 miles was 23.1. Um, so I took a long road trip. You know, a lot of that was driving up to the mountain, uh, lowered it a bit because I've got mud flaps on, which aren't aerodynamic. I also had the ski rack on quite a bit going up to the mountain. And then also I took a long road trip uh, to Yellowstone where I was driving around 75, 80 miles per hour uh, on the highway, which isn't that great for fuel economy in this vehicle. Uh, it's not very aerodynamic. So, you know, it lowered the overall by about 0.3, which was fairly insignificant, but you know, I'm mentioning it. So fuel economy is still getting around 23, uh, a little bit less than that now that I've moved a little closer to the city and a little bit more city driving, you know, it's going to be around the 21 range, not quite as good, but you know, whatever, that's the fuel economy story. Other than that, I haven't had any problems with it. I still do have a random rattle back there, but I haven't tried to find it at all, even though everyone last video, you know, was commenting and helping, which I do appreciate, you know, uh, if, if somebody knows exactly what that rattle is, it's not the little cover that's back there. A lot of people thought it might've been the cover. I took that uh, cover off, the removable cover off the second I got it. I didn't like it. Um, it just kind of didn't seem all that necessary, so I just removed it from the vehicle. So something in the back seat rattles. I haven't taken any time to look at it. It doesn't really bother me uh, anymore, so whatever, that happens. 
as far as getting the oil changed, it's been pretty cheap. It's like 50 bucks at the dealership, so I don't mind paying that. It saves me time, so you know, no complaints there. And also changing over between summer and winter tires. I was actually pretty surprised. I did a uh, when I swapped over to the winter tires, I got an oil change, synthetic oil change, and swapped the summer tires over to the winter tires, which of course I can't do myself. I don't have any tools that could do that. And it was like 80 some bucks. It was super cheap. I was uh, really impressed that it was that cheap, especially at a dealership. So that was kind of cool. So far, I don't have any complaints with my dealership service experiences. It's always been relatively cheap. It seems practical and it saves me time, so I don't mind doing it. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.